Hi everyone, and welcome to this video series on cone penetration testing, or CPT for short. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the various cones we use for the CPT, explaining the different parts of the cone, and helping you to select the right cone for your project. The cone is very important for CPT, it's the part that contains all of the measuring instruments. Let's first talk about the different parts of the CPT cone and the parameters they measure. This is the tip. It's the first part that enters the soil and it measures the resistance of the soil during penetration. And we call this the cone resistance or tip resistance. The sleeve measures the amount of friction the cone encounters as it goes through the soil. This is the sleeve friction. You can imagine that proportionally, a sandy soil offers less friction than a clay soil. So this gives information on the type of soil you're dealing with. We call this the friction ratio. Pore water pressure sensors are optional. You can see the difference in the cones here. So why would you choose a piezo cone, a cone with pore water pressure sensors? Well, first you can collect the data at the same time as the other two parameters, and more data is always better. With it, you're able to better delineate the different soil layers, correct the data for pore pressure effects, and have a second independent method to characterize the soil behavior. For those reasons, it makes sense to use a piezo cone, or a cone that can measure pore water pressure. So that's good to consider. But next, let's talk about the different cone sizes that are available. Cone sizes are designated by the cross-sectional area in square centimetres. Typical cones are 10 and 15 centimetres square in diameter. The choice of cone diameter is related to your soil type and circumstances. The 15 centimetre is most robust and more likely to pass through gravel, while the 10 centimetre is more sensitive, especially when paired with lower measuring range load size. There are also smaller cones like the 5 cm and 2 cm squared. These are normally used for special applications or in laboratory settings. The internal load cells take care of the measurements. The way they are placed within the cone is different for subtraction and compression cones. A subtraction cone has one solid internal load cell, which makes it solid, robust and durable. That's why it's best suited to high production rates in hard soils. The compression cone contains separate load cells for measuring cone resistance and sleeve friction. It produces the most accurate sleeve friction measurements. The cone itself, however, is more delicate, so more care needs to be taken when using this cone. Finally, let's take a look at the differences between an analog and a digital system. In an analog system, analog data, that is raw millivolt data, is transferred to the surface where it is then converted to digital data within the data acquisition system. In a digital system, this conversion takes place in the cone. Perhaps the biggest advantage of a digital system is that you can use universal cables which make it possible to connect the cone to various modules, advanced instruments that give even more information about the soil. More about these in our next video. Thank you for watching. We have lots more videos of CPT on our channel, as well as a written piece on cone selection on our Knowledge Hub, so that would be good to check out. I hope to see you for the next video.